Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Um, we got a lot going on. We have a lot going. Boy, I'll tell you, even though August, I hate the summer, but you know, things come up. Busy things, things you're supposed to do. And I try try and take it easy during the heat. We're having another humid day. But uh tomorrow I've got a colonoscopy. Oh god, do I hate those. Boy, you young guys, you take a lot for granted. But when you get older, you got to do this thing like every five years. I think it's been like six for me. I got one when I first retired. I remember that. I wanted to make sure that everything was good. And then I kind of put it off and I got to go tomorrow. I'm really not looking forward to it. Does anybody look forward to a colonoscopy? I don't know. There are some people that love, love going to the doctor, love getting checkups and blood work and all kinds of stuff. And uh, man, I'll tell you. For me, it's like, you know what it's like? It's like, a if you don't look for problems, <laughs> you know, you know, like if you go to a mechanic, I could take, I could take any car to a mechanic and they can find something wrong, right? So it's just like you. It's like, you know, sometimes you just want to avoid that whole doctor thing. And it's not a good thing. Believe me, you should go and you should get your annuals and you this and you that. But I don't know. Sometimes I think they look for things. And I've known a lot of people in my life that, were fine until they, you know, they started. That's why with my car, knock on wood, I do. I'm I'm from the school now that if it ain't fixed, don't. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I mean? You've heard that before. Because uh, sometimes you 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 put in, you do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, uh, you know, make sure everything's good, and you wind up creating more problems or whatever the case may be. So you just cross your fingers. You hope, but something you got to do as you get old. You you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, so we got that going on, but there was one thing I want to tackle today. Let's get started right if away. If you remember last week, or we did this lock over, and uh, this thing's real nice, right? Came out real good. Now, I got a couple, and I told you that I wanted to do a cutaway. I always wanted to do a cutaway of these locks to see, you know, to show you how they operate. I've seen cutaways before of these, and I just wanted to, uh, to do one. Now, uh, this one here, see this one here, the rust on it? That's what happens, you know, with a lot of these. That's why I had to fix it. But this one here works. This, this is the key for it, right? Works. Works nice. The problem is this one here has no key. And this would be a good, a good uh, candidate for a, uh, a see-through or a cutaway. Now, to do that, you see there's rivets here. Now, on the back, there's more rivets because these four center rivets hold the mechanism. You'll see that when I get it open. But the first thing, there's two ways to get this off. You could grind them off, okay? But when you grind them off, you're going to hit the cover and you're going to damage the cover. I, I'm always from the school. I like to try and keep things that if I ever want to put it back together, I could. So the, uh, the other way to take the rivets off is to drill them out. And it's always good practice to drill out rivets, get to know how to drill rivets out. And I'm going to show you here probably the, the best way to drill out these. Now, you see they're peened over. And because they're peened over and they're not done by a machine, you know, they have all kinds of facets on them. So if you try and put a drill bit on them, the drill bit's going to walk. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, here's a classic example of a walking drill bit. If you notice, the bit is extended kind of far. You see how it wobbles around. That's a walking drill bit. Now, the best way to uh, to stop that walking action is take a file, okay, and put a flat spot, okay, on top of the rivet. Just a few strokes across here, okay? A few strokes across. We'll put a nice flat spot. You see how that's getting nice and flat there? Let me show you. Just get it nice here. Okay, now that you have a nice flat spot, you see that? That's beautiful, isn't it? Now what you want to do is you want to take a, a center punch and punch in the center of the rivet. Using a center punch, make a nice dimple in the middle of it, and then we'll go over to the drill press again. Now if there's one item every shop needs, and they're not expensive, you buy sets on Amazon, is a center drill. They're double-ended, they're very stout, very rigid. They won't walk on you. This is perfect for what we're going to do now. So let's mount this in the drill press 
and start drilling that rivet. Out. Now you always hear me talking about rigidity and so much so you're like, all right, we're tired of hearing, but, but it, you have to think about it. Every operation, number one, quill travel. Okay, you wanna raise the table up as much as you can that you have the least amount of quill travel to, to contact your work. You could see here, I only have about a quarter of an inch before I contact my work, okay? Very little quill travel, much more rigid. Secondly, notice how I put the bit all the way up into the chuck so that not, not where the, flu the flutes are exposed, there's only a, a short amount of fluting, but you see how little bit overhang we have. Again, rigidity. All these things make a difference in how the operation is going to go for you. Um, once you start drilling, if you know, once you get that dimple cut, then you could start adding some cutting oil. I, I like Tap Magic. That's fantastic for, for, for this operation. And I will drill right into it. Once we established our dimp, see that? Once we established our dimple, now what we're going to do is we're going to put a little tap magic on there and drill further. Once we've drilled down to depth with the center drill, which is about here, now we're going to use a wider, a larger drill just to shave off that top part of the rivet. We just want to go down basically to the casing and, uh, and then we'll pry the casing up. Let me show you what that looks like. Notice what we had to do. We had to uh, readjust the drill press because we have a larger bit in there. Try and get one with a shallow angle instead of a steep angle. And again, we have that uh, very little bit of a uh, quill travel. Okay, we filled it with some tap magic. Now let's drill on that. Now you can see here we totally drilled off the head of that rivet okay now you could take a punch and punch it up but we don't want we want that rivet to kind of stay in there so basically we're going to do this with all of them and pry the cover off but if you wanted to punch that rivet out this is the time you would do it here but we want to take this cover off so we're going to do that same operation with the rest of these rivets once you have the drip with the heads drilled off okay what you're going to do is you could take a brass hammer go in from the side here find a lip or something and tap it and look at that now you it's just a matter of prying this up and you see how it's pulling away now let's pry that up all the way around okay here we go success plate is off and this is the inside of that padlock and let me show you how this works this is called a lever padlock okay they have different numbers of levers they have uh five lever four lever six lever this happens to be a four lever padlock okay now these are the levers here these little levers have a little slot cut in here some slots are high some slots are low and that's why you have to cut the key accordingly if you notice there's four cuts on this key okay you have um you have one two three and four this will move as i turn it when i put this on here this isn't the right key but as I put this on here and turn it, you see what happens here. It moves those levers up different lengths, okay? And when it gets to a certain length, uh, this will push this lever, the last one, the, the catch, over, which will move this part over, which is holding that. So now what I got to do is come up with a way to move each one of these levers up the right amount. Like that one's got to go there. The second one's got to go there. The third one's a deep one. The third one's got to go up a little further. You see what I mean? And then once I get all these levers lined up where this is clear like that, and then this piece moves over. And I'll show you. Let's try and make a key. Okay, the challenge now, I got a piece of metal here. This is an old, these are the old shelving uh, straps you used to nail to the wall and then put those clamps on for shelving. But it's uh, it's steel, and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and make a key out of this, okay? We're going to take this like this. We're going to bend this around the nail here to make this round and and uh, and see if we can't activate those levers. This is where we are. We bent this around here, the tip. Again, that's going to go around that circle. We cut this to the right length of a key. Now, let me show you how this is going to operate. When you put this on here like this, this turns, and when it does, it lifts those levers, you see? And you want that lever 
it has to lift it just enough. You see how that blocking one is good? That's too high, so it's got to be down here. So what I have to do now is mark where all those levers are and then cut away the key so that this goes just up enough that it'll, it'll let this pass by. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to try and do my best that I can to try and explain how this lever lock system works because it's so fascinating. The late 1700s is when it was invented in uh, this form of lock, and, and it still is, is viable today. Now, if you look at the bottom here, on the very bottom of the levers, there's a slide plate, and that's this piece of cardboard here. Picture that as the bottom lever, the slide plate that goes back and forth, okay? That slide plate also has the catch here that holds the shackle. Let's pretend this is that catch that holds the shackle. So this part has to go left and right. That's all that does. Now, if we didn't have any um, levers, that's the thing that controls it, that you need a key. You could just have a, a key that was solid, that didn't have any cuts, because this bottom part of the key hooks into here and moves it this way. That's what the bottom part of this key does. It hooks the bottom slide plate. Now, the only thing that's stopping the slide plate from going left or right is the levers. Now, levers are all cut from the same piece of metal, and they look like this, more or less. I made some, okay? Now, but you see, they're all the same piece of metal, but they're cut differently in the middle. Like this one has a uh, big top, but no bottom. This one here has got a big bottom, but no top. This one here has uh, pretty much in the middle. Same with here, pretty much in the middle. Now, depending on how you place these, one, two, three, four, that's how you cut the key. And what you have to do you see how right now, if we had this over here, these are the levers over here, and this is blocking, this little pin is blocking it from going left or right. So when you put the key in, it'll lift this one up, okay? It'll move this one down or whatever it has to and the other one until this could slide over. So that's what the levers do. Now, depending on how you set your levers up is you can have it one way or the other. Now, what's interesting is depending on how many levers you have, obviously, the more notches you'll have to cut in your key, and also the harder it is to pick. Now, this is pretty hard to pick to begin with because uh, these have a spring on top that push these down, and the, and the key, when it comes by, it pushes each one up till it gets that open space, and then it key pushes this over, releasing the latch or the lever. Let me show you that on the real lock. Now here's the key I made. You could see here, you see the cuts out? I cut that key out and there's the little circle that goes around that pin. And I had to cut this out just for each lever to get it to open up. Now I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna insert the key here onto the pin, right? Now when I turn the key, watch what happens down here. Those levers are gonna move up and move that sliding plate over. You see that? It just opened the lock. Move the sliding plate over, which is hooked up to this, and it opens the lock. To close the lock, you push this down, and you just reverse the key this way. And it moves that whole sliding plate back, and the lock don't. Isn't that cool? Again, look closely at the levers, how when the levers, when it, the key pushes up, see now it's an open spot. Now it just moves that sliding plate over, okay? And same thing here. If it was the key wasn't cut right, it would just stop. So that's uh, that's our key here that we made. There we go, a cutaway padlock. Pretty cool. I, I love these lever locks. I can't get enough of them. Okay, so in closing, another fun project for me in the shop, fabricating that key and getting that lock to work. Uh, hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, God willing, I'll see you again on Wednesday. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.